A key component of the modern world economy, the chemical industry delivers products and innovations to enhance everyday life. It is also an industry in transformation, where chemical executives and workers are delivering growth and industry-changing advancements while responding to pressures from investors, regulators, and public opinion. Discover how leading companies are approaching these challenges here on The Chemical Show. Join Victoria Meyer, president of Progressio Global and host of The Chemical Show, as she speaks with executives across the industry and learns how they are leading their companies to grow, transform, and push industry boundaries on all frontiers. Here's your host, Victoria Meyer. Hi, this is Victoria Meyer. Welcome back to The Chemical Show. So this is the first of the part two episodes of the week that we're going to be starting to publish. So as I mentioned in episode 100, we're adding a second episode to the chemical show each week. Our Tuesday episodes are following the same format, you know, and love featuring interviews and insights from chemical industry leaders. The Thursday episode, this episode is going to be more tactical. I'll be addressing topics and questions that I'm hearing from folks in the industry relevant news and timely happenings, and giving strategic and tactical answers and approaches. Think of these as a quick hitter, business and execution oriented, getting some learnings around strategy, around customers, around marketing, and other relevant topics. Um, And the intent is obviously just to, to give you a little bit more value and to give you some more insight. So I am looking for more of your questions. Send me a message on LinkedIn, leave a comment on YouTube or shoot me an email and let me know what questions you have and what topics you'd like me to address. Here we go. The topic I'm talking about this week is a question that's come recently from several business leaders that I've spoken with, some customers and clients that I'm working with that have basically said, why are we the last choice supplier and how do we move up to first place or be the supplier of choice, right? Or even just be a regular supplier versus being a spot last chance supplier. So the business leaders that I've talked with, let's be clear, they are first choice suppliers for many of their customers, but like many companies, they have a target customer or target set of customers with whom they'd like to have a better relationship and be a bigger part of their business. You know, what they've told me is they call us when they're in a bind and it's last minute and they can't get what they need from anyone else and we help them out. And then nothing, right? We want to be in the regular supplier mix. And My guess is this has happened to you. I think this has probably happened quite a lot over the past several years because the pandemic, the impact that it's had on supply chains, people were scrambling in all kinds of ways, shapes, and forms, going to new suppliers, going to new customers, created a very dynamic marketplace. And, you know, companies want to do business with who they want to do business with. There are companies, maybe you, who basically say, I am sick of being the last choice supplier. I want to be the first choice. I want to be a regular supplier to this customer. So we're going to talk about that. First of all, let's tackle the why. Why are you the last chance, last choice supplier? Number of reasons. First of all, Timing and other business relationships, right? So let's be honest. Everybody always talks about, Ooh, why do customers do business with, the, with you? It's the relationship. Well, they have, everybody's got relationships in place, some of which they're very happy with, some of which they're less happy with. I think one of the reasons here though is timing and the relationship they have with other suppliers. So maybe they already have other agreements in place, right? So there's contractual obligations that, you know, frankly, they can't get out of. They don't want to get out of Um, with other suppliers, with your competitors. That's one reason. They're honoring historic relationships and the business that they've been doing perhaps for years with certain suppliers. Um, And it's a relationship that's great, right? If, If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? When the relationship is going well, 
often suppliers don't have, or customers rather, don't have a reason to turn to other suppliers. So that's one thing, right? Timing and their other business relationships. The second piece of this is of why you are not a first choice supplier is perhaps you've got limited product or service offerings or just not the right ones. So let's think about this. In both cases, the customers that I spoke with that said, hey, we, we really want to be a first choice with this particular business partner. How do we get there? Um, they're much, they're big companies, really large companies. And often we see this with larger customers, they have minimum standards and requirements, right? They have a certain strategy that they're adhering to from a procurement perspective. They want suppliers that bring more to the table, the variety of products, the quantities and volumes that meet their requirements to, you know, when you think about consumer products, when I think about that, it's they need to be able to put all of the shampoo on the shelf or all the laundry detergent on the shelf. And they need suppliers that, can fit into their formulation profiles, right? So there's some, some size requirements, quantities and volumes and other things. You know, the other requirement sometimes is around credit rating and credit availability. It is possible that you're not at the top of the list because you have limited product or service offerings or just not the right ones to meet their needs, right? The third reason that you might very well be the last choice supplier is maybe your your reputation and relationship, both industry-wide as well as with that particular customer, right? So um, this is both a commercial relationship as well as individual relationship. What's the reputation that your company has around product quality and characteristics, around your service and reliability? Are you meeting the standards of that customer? Are you really competing effectively with your counterparts and your competitors, right? So it's possible that you are poor and less than ideal reputation or relationship is what's pushing you down the list instead of up the list. And then the fourth thing is really corporate style and fit. And, you know, I think we look at this and I look at this and you see companies, you're like, of course they do business together. They just match, right? Whether it's a size thing or a style thing values, right? So companies that really value operational excellence often pair up with suppliers that are operationally excellent. Companies that value nimble, innovative responsiveness pair up with nimble, innovative, responsive uh, suppliers, right? So there's this whole aspect of style and fit that gets down to values, that gets down to how you do business, et cetera. Um, the one thing I'm not going to talk about is pricing, right? So customers are always going to say, oh, the reason that we don't be, do business with you is your price. And then BS, right? That is not the reason why. That is a reason, right? And your prices have to be competitive, but you don't have to be the lowest cost, right? If you just look at your personal life, if I look at my personal life, I can see this on a daily basis. And this may be for you as your relationship with certain airlines or hotels. You're willing to pay a little bit more, right? Um, cosmetics brands, food, whether it be food that you prepare at home or restaurants that you go out to, decisions are made for reasons beyond product and price, right? So don't let price be the answer as to why you're not doing business together. There is something else. So how do you move up the value chain um, or move up in priority to become the first choice supplier or just even a regular supplier with these target customers. Number one, understand their why. Ask some questions. Why aren't you on their list? Who's currently serving them? How long have they been working together? What's working well and what's not, right? Do you understand their strategy, their business strategy, their procurement strategy, their innovation strategy, do your research, help understand the why behind their, how they're making business decisions, particularly as it relates to products and suppliers, right? Number two, fix yourself, right? If you know that your customer service, your customer experience or your serving offerings aren't where they need to be, fix it and demonstrate improvement. In some cases, it's changing out a salesperson. Um, in some cases, maybe it's your supply chain is not as robust as it needs to be. 
Fix what needs to be fixed and tell your story of who you are today, not who you were last year or five years ago, because this is the other thing. Reputations linger for a long time, and especially um, bad news. Bad news seems to hang around and you know, that cloud that hovers over you. Um, it is on you to tell your customers how you're different today, how you fixed whatever was broken in your system in the past, how your customer experience is top notch and what you're doing differently. Fix it and talk about it. Number three, expand your reach. You need to go beyond procurement. You need to be talking with multiple touch points in your customer. Build relationships in manufacturing, build relationships in R&D with the formulators, ask more questions, demonstrate what you bring to the table and build support across the organization. Know what they need and go back to them with the solution, right? And then fourth is just have patience and be persistent. When I was with Shell, there was a large consumer products company that we had been trying to do business with for years. The salesperson had been calling on them consistently for 10 years. I moved into uh, and was a role and was leading market development and wrapped this customer under me um, and took that primary relationship. Timing is everything, changing the relationship, asking different questions. We started doing business with them for the first time in a decade. And then that business continued. Part of it was just good luck and good timing. Part of it was telling a different story. Patience and persistence will help. Don't be a pest because sometimes you can be a pest and that's no good. But being patient, being persistent, fixing these things, understanding their why, fixing your customer experience and your service offerings and telling your story, expanding your reach, all of those things are going to help you go from being the last choice to being eh, one of the first choices. Anyway, if you've had this experience where you've been the last choice supplier, let me know. What was it? How did you overcome it? Are you still working to overcome it? Um, again, shoot me a message on LinkedIn, send me an email, leave me a response on one of the platforms, whether it be the website or YouTube or elsewhere. Um, and I hope you like this. We will be coming back with you with more tips and tactics and strategies next week. Thanks for listening to The Chemical Show. We'll talk to you soon. We've come to the end of today's podcast. We hope you enjoyed your time with us and want to learn more. Simply visit thechemicalshow.com for additional information and helpful resources. Join us again next time here on The Chemical Show with Victoria Meyer.